What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike with Project Dad Life and today is the day. We will be installing our two post car lift. All the information will be in the description below and we are gonna walk through this. This will be my first time installing one of these. So let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is laying out a couple chalk lines. Now the measurements for each lift is gonna be different, but this is pretty generic. It simply lets me find the center points and get it the right depth away from the sidewalls and then the garage door and get everything square and centered. And I'm simply gonna mark two X's on the lines and then those will be my reference points. But those two reference points, it'll let me know that I'm the same depth from my garage door and the same distance off the wall. So the post will be squared up inside the door. Now it's almost time to drill the holes for the anchors. Now I will be using a Bosch hammer drill. This will be pretty much the only specialty tool I use throughout this whole assembly. And I have a three quarter inch bit that I will be using. And because the minimum requirements for your concrete thickness is four inches and one quarter depth, I will mark this with a piece of electrical tape at four and a half inches. That way I can simply just take it all the way down. And if it gets close to the tape, I know I will have plenty enough concrete for these anchors. Not too bad, I'm about two hours in. I got the main post up, the post that's gonna have the power unit on it. And per the directions, you pretty much install this post exactly level and shim it and torque it exactly perfect. And then the second post will kind of distance and set off this with some measurements involved. But there is a cross overhead top piece that you bolt together and it kind of ensures that two posts are set evenly. Um, the main issue I had with this post, as you can see, it is level now, but previously the concrete was not level. So what you gotta do, you stand the post up, it comes with some shims. You have to level it with the shims as best you can, torque it down, and then once you torque it to 130 foot-pounds on your concrete anchors, twist the post a little bit. So you have to torque it, loosen it, shim it, level it, torque it, loose it, repeat, repeat cycle. I did about four revolutions of that. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. So um, off to the second post. Now we're gonna get the second post stood up and then we're gonna hook up our top cross piece. That way it'll center them. And then we'll anchor and drill that one down and continue working. I know I'm cheating with the tractor, but that was the best investment I've ever made. And I do not pick up anything heavy anymore. Second post.
All right guys, phase one of the lift and saw is complete. That went pretty smooth. It took about twice as long as I thought it would, but we got it done. It's leveled, plumb, and secure. Now on to phase two. Phase two is gonna include mounting our electrical motor, running all the electrical wires, mounting our hydraulic hoses to connect the left and right cylinders, and then mounting that, or connecting that to the motor, um, getting all those uh, cables adjusted and secured as well. There is a front and back cable that operate the feet pads for the lifting mechanism, and they kind of have to be in sync. So we have to run those cables over overhead along with a hydraulic hose. We have the tractor bucket to help us do that. And then we will get all that stuff tidied up and secure and hopefully get this thing powered up today. Let's get started. We are cruising up until this point. This is the first problem I ran into with this lift I wanna share with you guys. As you saw, the um, lift motor post legs went on perfectly. These big pins slid right through the holes as expected. This side, however, they are definitely not fitting in the tops of these holes that are drilled or machined into the block that accepts the feet is definitely mushroomed at the top for some reason. They are not even close to fitting in here. So we had to break out the file and get all these reamed out, which is kind of annoying, but I just wanted to share with you guys, this is what I ran into. So break out the file and get them reamed out to the correct size. All right, that's a little better. Let's try this again. These things, definitely have some weight to them so it's not like an easy task to do but it definitely helps having this lift bar knee high and then you can just kind of use your knee to hold it up i definitely would not be able to do this with one hand these things are so heavy get a little mallet and see if we can caress this the rest of the way in perfect this is the last mechanical piece. This is just the arm positioning lock. As you can see, it's got some divots right there that correspond with the arms. You simply slide them down and there's a spring that goes on the bottom with a simple cotter pin. Pretty nice. Final stage is the wiring. This is the box that I came with. I simply took the cover off. This is the overhead um, height limiter switch. It goes in line with your power wire. Um, and then the wires that it came with to hook up were coming out of this conduit right here, which it kind of looked a little funny. So I switched this and I put the overhead limiting switch power going into this conduit box right here. I'll simply drill another hole on the side and then I'm just gonna take this little whip off that it came with because all it did was extending the power wires. If you bring your power directly into this box, you can use these yellow terminals right here and just get rid of the extension whips that it came with. So what I'm gonna do is drill a new hole right here, put a new piece of conduit, have my wire, my power wire coming from my breaker out this box following this other power wire. And I'm, instead of taking it up the lift on the side to where it's exposed, I'm simply gonna follow what they did. I'm gonna drill a hole right here, put another grommet, and we're gonna run the wires inside of this post. And the reason for that is because inside this post, they have these super nice little channels that already house the hydraulic and the power for the overhead switch. And they sit right behind these little um, sheathings going all the way up. So there is a perfect spot to run our power wire straight up to the top, keep it nice and clean and concealed. So that is the plan. 
two pole breaker, 20 amp circuit breaker added to the panel. The wiring is pretty straightforward on this box. I'm trying to use the electrical box that I came with instead of adding the extra one. Um, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work better and then everything is clean, looks nice and works. So we simply have our ground hookup and then we have um, our two powers right here. We will identify the white wire as a power. So we will take this black. So one power is going to wire straight up to the motor. So that is the main power for the motor. The second power wire, we will simply power the overhead safety switch. This is gonna send direct power to the safety switch overhead. It's pretty much like a light switch. Once that safety bar is lifted up, it breaks contact, kills the power. So now we have the hot going into the safety switch. It's coming back out. So this is our new hot wire. And this one will simply be hooked directly up to the power switch on the unit to activate it. And that is it. It is wired up. A little bit cleaner than what we had originally. But I like it. That will work. All right, that's it, the lift is installed. I went through, tightened everything up. Now we have to flip the breaker on the sub panel. I'm gonna power it up, run the hydraulic pump. It'll probably take a little bit to fill the lines up. I'll check for leaks. Once the lift starts lifting and it's actually operating, then we'll have to adjust the height on the left and right lifting posts and make sure they're in sync when they go up and down. All right, cross your fingers. <laughs> there it is. So everything is adjusted and works perfectly. That was a pretty easy lift install. Now let's go get the project car. Let's get the Trans Am on this thing and see if it can lift the car up and down, see how good that works. And then after that, I'll pull it off. And for those of you who are still hanging around for detailed information, I'll walk through the installation on this lift and hopefully make it pretty simple and tell you a couple hiccups I had along the way and how easy this process was. I'm gonna take it up just a little bit and see where I'm touching and where I'm not. Let's take her up, fellas. This worked out so perfect because I can still I can raise the car all the way up to working height underneath it with my garage door up. That is awesome. That's what I was hoping for. It seems to be balanced really good on there. I'll tell you, this lift is definitely a lot wider than I thought it was going to be. Like meaning from post, in between both posts to get your car in there, it's definitely a lot wider than I thought, which is good. It gives you a lot of room to work, but it kind of seems like those arms are stretched out pretty far to the car. All right, let's cycle it up and down about 10 times and see how she does. Could not be more happy and satisfied with this lift. Now for the fine spec details. This is a Race Tools Direct 9,000 pound two post asymmetrical car lift. I'll put the links and all the detailed information below. The install probably took me a total of six hours, I would say. Now I did that by myself over a couple of days. It was pretty easy to install, to be honest. I really enjoyed installing this. It was a big project. 
it went together very smooth the directions were very clear the only issue i had was just that one with the um, the pin actually receiving into the lift arm on the opposite side of the motor um, those those holes were burnt up and they were just kind of collapsed so i had to get the file out and file those as y'all saw to get those pins in there other than that i did not have one single problem with lift it came with all the hardware all the electrical uh, connections it needed, every single bolt, nut, washer, everything it needed to assemble this lift. I'm super happy with it. Now I will recommend getting a big impact drill or concrete drill for drilling the anchors in the concrete. Now I can foresee that being a huge issue if you went with a smaller size drill. Luckily my friend had like a big rotary drill that I borrowed with a three quarter inch bit and it made really simple work of drilling all the holes. And luckily they were all four and a half inches thick of concrete, except for one, I was only able to get about uh, three and a half inches in that because I hit a piece of rebar I think and the bit just wouldn't go any further. So I'm super comfortable with the anchors on this lift. It really came out really good. As far as adjustments go, there was really only one spot and I'll show you that you had to adjust. These right here are the bolts and you can see there's one going back there pointing down and there's one pointing up right here. These are the left and right cables that control the lift arms. As you can see, there's a front and a back one. One cable for the left side, one cable for the right side. And those adjustments right there is how you get the lifting feet on the left and right to be exactly even. That was really the only adjustment. The second adjustment was when you were mounting it up, you actually had to get this thing plumb and level vertically. So it came with three quarter inch shims you can use. Unfortunate, unfortunately, my concrete was about a quarter inch out, um, sloped the whole way. So I did have to use about four shims on each side to lift it back to get it plumb and vertical. Other than that, I did do the, I guess, kind of custom electrical. You know, I actually use this um, housing right here for all my electrical connections. And then like I showed you earlier, I ran the electrical wire inside and used the little adapters that it came with to run the hoses. And as you can see right behind there, my yellow 12 2 wire is ran inside here with the hydraulic and the other electrical core that goes up for the height safety switch. Now, I'm not sure if it's legal or if it's the right way to do that to run it bare, but yes, I did run the bare Romex and I just taped it with electrical right here and ran it straight up on top and wired in the 20 amp breaker. To me, it seems like that was the only way to go. It's, it's not touching anything. It's ran the same way the other electrical line is from the safety switch and it's running up to the top and then it joins on my one by four wood running across the length of the shop and goes right down into a 20 amp double pole breaker, which worked out perfect. And if you wanna know more about electrical wiring, I have a detailed video of where I installed that sub panel and wired everything up. I'll put that in the description below. All right, guys, that sums up this week's project. Thank you again for watching and hanging out this long. I know it was a lengthy video, but it was a ginormous job that we tackled. And I think anybody can do this. It actually turned out to be pretty easy and pretty fun to do. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe and give us that thumbs up. And we will see you next week on the next project video. And hopefully we'll get this Trans Am in here on the next couple of videos and getting this thing closer to getting on the road. Thank you guys. God bless. We'll see you next week.